explain what a PE ratio is. So price to earnings know. ratio. So for you know, for an easy example, let's say we're a, there's a there's a company down the road that we want to buy, and we knock on the door, and they tell us that they're for sale, and their earnings last year was a million dollars, and we ask them, I think that's their net income, and we ask them, okay, what do you want for the company? And they say, oh, 10 million. So we're paying 10 times earnings for that company. Well, on the Wall Street, given its you know, instant liquidity in most cases, 10 times earnings is very, very low. Most companies are trading at you know, 20, I mean, the S&P is trading about nearly 20 times earnings. So you can see the difference, and many companies trade at 30, 40, even much higher. So that gives you, a, it's a number of times it takes you to get back the original investment by, by static earnings. Now, I said static earnings. That guy who's saying, I want 20 million for my million dollar a year business, may say the reason why is I'm growing at 20% at a year. And that's why he wants a premium for his company. So we, we can't look at PEs in a vacuum. We need to look at it in context of the growth of the earnings as well. So in a public company concept, when we're doing a M&A transaction, there's a multiple of EBITDA right. that they will apply to what the purchase price should be. So PE is similar in concept, is that yeah, right? Yeah, and again, it, it, the EBITDA is more the cash flow, which, is, which I like to look at more so than the earnings for the reasons I've mentioned. But yeah, it, it really gets the, the, the heart or the root of the enterprise. And, and again, looking at that growth and the trajectories of growth, and then you've got to look at the business itself. Take the math on this side and sort of get into the qualitative look at the business. What's their addressable market? What's their products? What's, you know, what's their protection, their moat? All these things come into play as well.